Hey guys, this is Jeroen, better known as Dutch Bond fan, and yesterday I finally got to see No Time To Die. After a six year wait, I could not be happier to have finally watched this movie, and uh, sorry for everyone that still has to wait. Uh, I'm especially looking at my friends uh, down under uh, and all the countries that don't have No Time To Die as of yet. Uh, I really feel your pain. Um, I share your pain kind of as well. I was going to initially see this movie in London. Uh, I had this whole trip planned uh, for years. I had my plane tickets ready, uh, but due to quarantine restrictions and COVID related stuff, for me the trip was off. So that is what it is. Um, now instead of, you know, pondering about it and feeling down, I made the best possible plans here in the Netherlands and went to the biggest cinema in Amsterdam instead, which is an hour and a half drive from where I live. Uh, but it was totally worth it to see it in that theater there. Uh, me and Leerit had the best seats, VIP seats. We had perfect sound quality. It was a beautiful theater. What an experience to watch a Bond movie there for the first time. So I could not be happier to have experienced it in this way, which for me was the, the best alternative to London possible for this year. Hopefully next time I will join in with the Bond community and watch it with everyone else and I would absolutely dream to experience the Royal Albert Hall myself one day like my friend David Saritsky, Kelvin Dyson, Tom Sears and Chris Wright from James Bond Radio all the people from the Bond community that I love to talk to that I consider at least friends within the Bond community um, I'm so happy for all the guys that did uh, went there and I can only hope to one day share that with all of you guys as well. Um, talking about the movie, this is the spoiler free review. I don't want to spoil anything plot related here, any major things, just my initial thoughts coming back from watching the movie only yesterday. Um, I'm also going to be recording a spoiler-laden review in a different video, so uh, look out for that as well in case you've already seen the movie yourself. For those who haven't seen the movie, this one is one that needs to sink in. It, you, it, there's so much to process for the simple reason that they broke so much ground that they simply never really did before in any of the other Bond movies. And that, not just one thing, but several things were just totally different, which I think is the major plus to No Time To Die, because it feels so fresh, so different to all the 24 that came before this. And yet, they homaged all the older ones in a cool way as well. There were so much clever references to the past, so much Fleming references as well. Uh, that fans will love. Um, Fugunaga's directing, it feels so fresh coming after the two Sam Mendes movies and the same holds for uh, Hans Zimmer's music which I feel was terrific. His score is amazing, the music felt so fresh coming after Spectre which had a very recycled soundtrack coming after Skyfall using uh, Thomas Newman's music twice in a row. Uh, this had none of those issues, it felt completely new. Um, there was so much to enjoy here, the action was superb, um, the story is like a lot of us predicted, very emotional, very uh, emotionally driven, so to speak. Um, there is a lot that needs to sink in constantly. And then it's balanced out with a lot of humor as well, which I think is so welcome. Uh, Craig kind of continues the tone that he set in Spectre in terms of the humor, uh, but in a very well-written, fun way, I think. Um, so, overall, I'm very positive about No Time To Die, but there are a lot of moments, like I said, that still need to sink in, that I still need to find my opinion on, or where I'm still kind of uh, in the middle about, so to speak. So, 
I know that sounds kind of cryptic, uh, but you know, that's what you get when you do a spoiler-free review. Um, most of the characters were well written. Madeline certainly was a lot better written and a lot more planned out and developed in this movie compared to Spectre. So this definitely, I feel, lifts Spectre up as well. A movie I personally enjoyed already anyway. Um, obviously Blofeld returns, we know that from the trailers, that's not a spoiler. Uh, he was creepy. He, he he was set up in a very different way that I wish he portrayed a little bit more uh, Inspector as well. Um, also very, very happy what they did with him for the most part. Um, then there is the Scooby Gang, so to speak, that returns all the MI6 regulars. They're used in a fun way this time around, I can say. Um, Q, Money Penny, M, they were all used well, not necessarily in a bad way, uh, like people would critique Spectre for having them involved too much in the action and stuff. Here they didn't do that in that way like Spectre did it, they did it in a much more clever way, I feel, so again that's another positive for me. Um, I loved what they did with Ana de Armas, I'm still divided on Luciana Lynch. Uh, I will talk more deeply about all that stuff in my uh, spoiler related review, but what I can say is my initial thoughts of Lashana Lynch being a little bit too much in your face and a little bit too, too much of a political device, so to speak, a political statement that is walking. I feel that's kind of why her character was written. Um, and. To me, this is my opinion, that's in your face a little bit. There were fun moments with her though, and I'm very happy that it's not just her one-upping Bond. Bond does the same to her uh, throughout the movie a lot, which kind of makes the relationship fun a lot as well, which I was relieved about. Um, the cinematography in this movie is amazing. All the locations are brought in in such a cool way. And another thing I can spoil without spoiling the actual pre-title sequence is I think this was one of the best pre-title sequences the movies in the whole series ever saw. Uh, obviously I only saw it once so that also still needs to see, sink in but there was so much to it. There was just so much to this pre-title sequence. They really took their time to, to build up this movie and uh, get you pumped to see the rest. So. In my book, that's always a plus. So overall, No Time to Die, in my opinion, um, is, is it a hit or miss? To me, it's a hit, but with an appendix that there is a lot of stuff that needs to sink in and that can definitely polarize the Bond community and that I feel polarizes me in some aspects as well, which I will all talk about in my spoiler-laden uh, review. So. No Time to Die, you do need to check this out, you don't want to miss this um, and I'm very curious to hear your guys' opinions as soon as you've seen it as well. Please bear in mind the hashtag no time for spoilers, especially on this video. This is really intended for all of those who haven't seen the movie yet and who are just curious to my initial thoughts. I'm positive about it. Where would I rank it with the, the Craig movie so far? My, my prediction was it was going to go right in the middle. I, I have to say, this is so difficult after, you know, it's only been yesterday, I've only seen it once. Uh, but it has the potential to be among the top, maybe topping Skyfall, if you're okay with certain things in it. Which I know, again, sounds cryptic. And I'm, I'm still... I, I can't decide yet where to put it, but I, I, I can say I enjoyed it more than Spectre and Quantum. Um, is it gonna top Casino Royale and Skyfall for me? I can't say after a day yet, but it's I'm positive about it overall and I will get much deeper into it in my spoiler laden review also coming up. Hope you enjoyed my initial reaction, definitely check this movie out, I uh, hope you enjoyed and we'll see each other very soon.